your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and a delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. This is Shekinah, an encounter with God's love, power, and wisdom. And you're about to listen to Apostle Philip Cephas of Shekinah Network International. Stay tuned because your life will be transformed by the words that you will hear. Yeah, but immediately when the Holy Ghost came, you see, when they aligned to that symphony in the spirit, they were given strength, but judgment also proceeded. And the Bible said that same night, Herod was slain. And the Bible said the gospel itself moved by again. That means that anytime we are threatened is when we should pray them all. I came from Zaria. I came from one of the hardest places in the north. I assure you, I know what you are talking about. I have seen how many more times they have killed people. In fact, my grandfather, it was full of need that gathered her in our house and they killed him. They slaughter him. Break him. We gather him to bury. My mom, they, grandmom, they break her head. And I understand that if I'm not careful, a time will come when they will gather me too. When they gather me, what will I do? How many scriptures can you quote before you will die? A time comes when it's not about the scripture you can quote. It's how much more energy has been built within you. Can you be able to shout Jesus and you will appear in an order in the spirit? Because if you can't, many more times they will want to kill you. What will you do? There are realms where men can disappear. There are realms where you can blind their eyes. There are realms where you can fly. Which one do you know? If you don't understand the symphony in the spirit, you will not know that there are possibilities that lie beyond speaking in tongues. And in the days when they were confronted, they know that if we return back to our camp, we will align to an order in the spirit. And so long as we strike that cause, strength will be given to us for the time so that we can be able to advance because God knows the challenge we are going to right now he look upon the church in the book of revelation he said I know your tribulation I know what you are going through and because I know what you are going through just utter utter a word in the spirit I will release strength I realize that it doesn't matter the challenge that is peculiar to you if you are in the dungeon like in the book of lamentation if you cry unto God strength will be supplied if you are actually in the lion den if you cry unto God lion will not do anything if you are actually in a flame that burned with fire if you cry a fourth man can appear because God can always release strength to help in time of need so long as you can align to that symphony you are not the only one in that situation you can be in a boat that is crashing if you can wake on, up, wake on upon him if you can awake you should understand that something can be engaged a believer is not without an advantage but the advantage lies in a place in the spirit i mean you can know how to be able to join into that location you may be so weak on the earth that is why we say prayer is a transporter it takes you to places in the spirit where you can never be able to utter places in the spirit where you can never be able to understand there are many realms in the spirit determined to give you advantage on the earth it's commensurate to the level of challenge that you go through but you may never be able to lay hold of them or to remain perpetually in alignment to the symphony in the spirit. It was not long enough. We saw another kind of order that began to happen. And we saw that the Bible will remain a story spoken on this earth until you and I begin to rise to pray. Many years ago in Zaria, all kinds of decadence, all kinds of carnality were going on. And we decide to bind ourselves with an oath. We say we will not live and die and watch our territory just ravage like that. Many people do not understand that the Islam don't take it gently. I have never seen an Islamic person take it gently. They don't believe in that. The Bible says since from the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of God suffered violent and only the violent take it by force. There are fanatical Christians. I am part of them. If I was a Muslim, I would have been a Boko Haram. Because I don't like this, you are cold. No. If I am God, I will speed you out. Because he has said the same. Many believers have been speed out. You are not on fire for God. You are not on fire for the devil. Where are you? Because you cannot count. Everyone that makes impact, whatsoever religion you find yourself, you will be a fanatical person. And that is why it will shock and surprise you. They are training Islams. Many of them, they are training them to become terrorists. Then the days when they need to pick up a sword, they should pick it up. Don't say you are weak. No, pick it up. In the same way, you must be able to understand that there is none of us here that is weak. The Bible says the least among us has to be as strong as David. David was a strong man. But you see, he looked like a weak man. But he was actually a strong man. His strength came from Adulam. Because as he was in Adulam, he was being equipped to fight the fight of the spirit. The Bible says the Lord teach your hand how to war, how to fight. Dominion is enforced by war. Don't be afraid of it. Engage it. I have been waiting and I'm still waiting. The day that they will surround me, they will say they will kill me. I'm looking for the possibility that can lie. 
I've seen it in my dream so much time. I want it physically. I love the scene of war. It enticed me. It enticed me. Because I know we can't run away from me. The day is going to come. And if that day come, if you fail in the days of battle, the Bible say it's because your strength is small. Not because the battle is fierce. Battle are always fierce. But men of strength are not afraid of battle. Soldiers are waiting. When are we going to go for the next battle? I'm not afraid. We will die one day. Any by any, I will die. I'd rather die as a warrior than to die like a coward. I will die fighting war. Why do you think Islam will not conquer Benue State? Because they have war. Nigeria is learned to Nigeria has been known to be divided by rivers. River Ninja and River Benue. Only Benue River keep it. Ninja has been conquered. And you see, they are trying to advance from Nasarawa State. They are moving, they are trying to enter so that they can conquer Benue. But there is a prophecy. There is a prophecy that Benue is going to be the last line defined. If the Fulani men did not conquer, they cannot conquer now. Our fathers have been warriors. Our fathers have been warriors. They have been able to resist the gate of hell. See, let me tell you. I realize that Benue is a gate to the east. <laughs> if you know about what the eastern gate is, maybe one day they will do a teaching at the eastern gate. To understand the advantages that come from that gate. And it is what happened in Benue that determine what happens in the east. The infiltration you see, they must stood this gate there. A man must be able to stood, stand, and never ensure that they conquer this region. There is a spiritual heritage, but there is a physical heritage. They might have tried to encroach spiritually. If we stop them, they will try to encroach physically. We must be able to stop them again. You see, Kaduna people, we are too careful. Let's play it soft, softly. Until Rufai came, he said, I am tired of Muslim and Christian ticket. Come on, let a Muslim come. And he was able to enforce Muslim, Muslim. There's nothing you can do about it. And it will continue like that. They try to went into just. They want to do the same in just. The plot to be fought, but you see, our defense to the eastern gate is the plain way. They have tried their possible best, they are conquering us in Nasarawa State. I am seeing their foolishness. We are trying to raise it up now, but I'm telling you the truth. We must be able to be careful and understand the advantage that lies with the plain way. And our ordination lies upon you. Our parents were warriors, we will not lose that heritage. No, we must continue in the same order. You must learn to war. No one at the level of attack. No one at the level of marginalization. No one at the level of discrimination is because there is a prophecy upon the pathway. There has been a land divided by two rivers. There has been a nation that is darkened in the completion. But you see, I'm assuring you the truth. This nation is not without support. This nation is not without strength. And Makodi being the headquarters, you must be able to understand those that dwell within are supposed to be the heritages and the princes and they are supposed to be the princes that hold the gate tight because the nobles determine the destiny of a nation if the nobles are conquered all of us will become slaves in babylon god forbid that they will become slaves in babylon and eat food together with the nobles of babylon no we refuse to defile ourselves we shall keep the heritage so strong there is an ordination upon you there is a strength upon you there are swords being given to you in the spirit you must learn to conquer they will come for your family first they will come for your territory by the time they conquer we are gone but we must say no we must say no do you know that the operations of the influence of nigeria actually there is a, there is a potter that lies in ninja and in Benue that govern the political landscape of this nation Lagos and Abuja actually are borrowed territories upon which they are establishing strength. Initially, they don't have those potters. But it was because these regions have been manipulated. And because they have been manipulated, so these other places became a cadas. They are actually illegal occupants that occupy those stones. But if you check very well, it's not a mistake that our lands were actually divided. As the heritage of Nigeria, there should be Ninja and there shall be Benue. And the disunity and the war you see that go in the Benue is the same thing that happened in the Nanja landscape. 
But we must be able to understand that our men that must unify the strength of the tribes, unify the strength of the clans, so that they can fight again. In the days when a tribe is divided in Israel, it became a challenge because it's a nation that came against themselves. And that is the strategy they want to use so that they can be able to change the strength and the status of what is going on. So that before we know it, we are awake and realize that an illegal, an illegal occupant is occupying the thrones and the servants are now begin to ride upon horses. And we that are supposed to be sons of the land are actually walking upon foot. It shall never come to pass. You see, I need you to understand that we are given the strength to become those that we herald the next revival. And it's not, it's not a mistake upon which fathers came. And it's upon this land they came and gave the prophecy. Then let you understand that if you look at yourself as a local champion, no, there is a heritage that lies upon here for a global relevance. But can you tap into the economy of that global landscape? It's because you have not seen the windows in the spirit. Check oftentimes men that come to conquer this region are not actually indigenous of this region. Why? It was because they understand the portal that lies up this land and they came and take advantage of that portal and they stood within the gate. What are actually the inheritance that lies upon the land? What are the nobles of the land doing? The nobles of the land are looking for crumbs to eat. It becomes a challenge. We must awake unto responsibility. We must be able to rise, align unto the symphony of the spirit. It doesn't really matter whether you are in a cave called Adulam. A time can come when a new king needs to be enthroned and they will look upon you shall be the one that is qualified. If you are not enthroned by right, you will be enthroned by war. In the days of war, nobody can challenge Goliath. It required a man that can challenge Goliath. And the man that was able to conquer Goliath became a king because in that day, even the king was scared. Days of war are coming again. And when those days come, what we need are David, men that can rise for us. In the days of war, we now realize that the kings are useless. We realize that the army was a useless army. In the day when Goliath boasts, Israel don't need an army again. All the army ran away. Everybody was afraid and the king was threatened because Saul knew that the kingdom is taken away. Because the plan of Goliath was not the army. The plan of Goliath was a throne. So long as he can march to the throne and sit upon the throne, he can kill anyone on the army. And only David could be able to defend them. David came and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? I have been trained. I have been equipped. God has taught my finger to war. He has taught me to this time. And I have been apportioned for a time such as this. And because I am a portion for such a time as this, I know this uncircumcised Philistine can go down. A time is coming and it's going to be soon where we will need the ninja and the penway to defend us. Where will we find them? Where are we going to find the men? Many of our men went there, but they failed us. Do you know how many men raised up from the penway? Do you know how many mighty men that God has raised from the penway? Go and check the history. Go and find out mighty men, many powerful men whether in politics in government internationally that come from the bedway many of them are not realizing the heritage that land upon their land and they let the land perish in decadence they will come back one day and discover that their home have been sold to slaves but we must be able to to defend the frontiers of these borders because a day is coming when Goliath will march upon our camp and in that day only those that have been equipped in the place of war that can be able to stand and David knew that it has nothing to do with the swing no there was a spirit that breathed upon Goliath and cut him down because the glory of God that can make a life can also kill God is releasing his glory upon you so that in the day when you want to judge it is the same glory that can judge the same thing happened to a man named Samson Samson thought it's all about the job of an ass. No. In the days of Samson, Israel don't need an army again. All the army of Israel is a waste of time because one man rose. In the days of Samson, there is no need for an army in Israel. Because one man, one man, by the war that he does, he can conquer many. I didn't end up with David. And that is why you have men like apostles here. Why? Because you see, whether you like it or not, the job of the apostolic is equipping and building. The day the apostolic stop equipping and building, it has failed. The body of Christ can only be around by the apostolic peeping eh, that comes upon the strength of the laborers. Whether you like it or not, the equipping that will happen is the same thing that happened in the cave called Adulam. How men that we are feeble, men that we are indebted, men that we are down to do, men that we are not qualified. How many of us are here that are like that? We are so many. We gather together unto David in a cave called Adulam. And after a while, the Bible says mighty men came out from there. 
and all the sons of Anak God their reply in the days when the mighty men of David host in the days when the sons of Anakim will come where are we going to find other mighty men that will stand the time came David was able to raise many mighty men the goal of any apostolic stronghold center is to be able to raise men as shooting stars that in the days when war begin to sprang up they can say this one go here this one go here this one go here and everyone will return back with the head of the poster everyone will return back with the head of Goliath and it will be known that there is a king in Israel but in the days when Goliath marched onto our camp who can stand for us who can defend us so many churches going on as usual so many camps going on as usual but in the day Goliath stand our general overseers will run how many of our overseers stand to war if the verdict of death come upon them how many can stand now they realize that strength is not in number no strength is in alignment in the spirit and anyone that is aligned in the spirit becomes so strong and it doesn't really matter whether David was not clapped upon in the day he fought Goliath everyone clap for him there are days when men are not trying to because of the battle they fear because of the battle they fight do you know that a general is not a general by mouth in the day you lobby your way to become a general one day when the battle gets so fierce they will say oh general go home you will be the first casualty of war but any general that fights but as a result of his escapade in war he is giving rank giving badges all the decorations are actually bleed of sword how many of you could take your back we are going to see sword we are going to see marks of war that is fought how many of you have come into a point where you are pressed beyond measure and yet again you survive because you know a God that can raise the dead you see I will not let you to be ignorant of how many times you are pressed beyond measure we fought a lot of war but we survived because there is a God that can raise the dead a time came they gathered together and stoned Paul and just when he thought he was dead a God that can raise the dead raise him again days are coming my friends when Goliath will be unleashed again and in the days when Goliath is unleashed we need strong men that can be able to stand to defend but these men that can be able to stand are going to be only men that understand the symphony of the spirit the same thing happened in Shushan the place a time came suddenly Mordecai came Haman came and it looks as though it was a rivalry it was, it was not a rivalry it was actually a beast that uttered that let the whole of Hebrew people be annihilated and in the days when the verdict was passed that all of them be annihilated the lord look upon the entire landscape there is no man that can survive there is no man that can stand for the children of israel and he beckon upon women do you know that men in the days when men fail what do you think god do god reach out to women when you look at the book of judges the book of judges was actually a book that depicted the escapade of men in the days when the archives of men the chronicles of the warriors of israel was actually canonicized we saw men like jephthah we saw men like ordner we saw men like samson but we say a woman fashioning within them we say a woman like deborah it then means that a time came that the heritage of men was stopped and god looked upon who can be able to go for us who can we send and a woman say here am i send me and the bible say a time came when deborah arose as a mother in israel she occupied a vacancy in the spirit as a warrior and all the men that we thought we are men because they were trousers we discovered that actually they were actually wearing scared so to be a man in the spirit is not about putting trousers because there are many women that are men and there are actually some men that are women because we saw in the spirit in that day that they were no longer men that are head of the family there are only women that were head of the family because in the days when war began to happen we saw that only deborah can rose and even the king realized that he need to be afraid for his life before he do anything come and consult the brother how far what did you get from the palm tree i need the portal upon which you speak from the king did not understand that from the palm tree of the brother there is a symphony that happened in the spirit she's only strong because she aligned to that symphony in the palm tree but the king himself did not understand how to align to that symphony in the spirit so he became a weak man not because he was weak it was because he cannot understand the ordinances of the procession in the spirit so the brother became an irreplaceable entity in that land just because she can understand the symphony in the spirit no wonder our politicians become upon babalao at night why because they know until an oracle actually utter the voice of 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 the spirit it is not possible for you to be able to do 
there is no one that will not know that there is an energy that comes from an altar and only those that understand the strength of that altar and they are recognized by the spirit that are like the tones that govern that altar can be able to have relevance it doesn't matter you can be in a lady you can be in can show you can control people in the u.s your decree can change what they are doing in the united states of america you don't know because it doesn't matter where the altar is it doesn't matter where the shrine is it's the potency of the shrine that determines its strength of influence and that is why everyone that who let actually understand where the altar and sometimes the altar is eating in a place where it's not common to normal man I decide to be actually the keeper of the altar. I decide to sit upon the altar. I decide to be the one that can sit within the altar. Because he that sits upon the altar control the speakings. Control the others. You can come and beckon upon the man that is upon the altar. But the man upon the altar is the strongest man. So that is why Deborah became so strong. Not because of anything. But because she is the one that only understands the symphony of the spirit. And there is nothing that the king can do until he consults her. The chief of army was not chief of army by name. He has to consult a woman named Deborah. It was because a time came that there were no longer warriors in Israel. And Deborah rose. She rose as a spiritual mother of the whole of Israel. We spoke so much about spiritual fathers. What about spiritual mothers? It's because the heritage has been lost. And in the days when Deborah lose their palm tree, they become twerkers in their palo. They become prostitutes and adulterers. They became fornicators. They become all kinds of funny kind of people because they have lost their strength in God. We need to be able to restore the order of Deborah's again. Women that are warriors. Women that are keepers. Women that understand the ordinances of the pledges. Women that can speak and change the orders in the spirit. Where are women that can be able to move and we can look upon them and say, what did the Lord tell you last night? What did you actually see in the spirit last night? What is the Lord saying for the season right now? Women are known to carry the body in Women are not to actually become burden bearers. The strength of the ox is upon women. But you see, in the days when they lose that strength, it becomes a challenge. The womb of women is supposed to enable them to be able to grow in capacity, to be able to handle the strength of the burden upon them. And let me tell you, if a house, if people in a house are wayward, it's not because the man is wayward, it's because the woman is wayward. I realize that the ordination of beauty actually lies upon the women and if any man actually have the strength to be able to carry out the affairs of God is because he borrowed the womb of a woman because men do not have womb things are better from the womb so there is a borrow in a position a posture that we actually we actually occupy it so that we can be function as though we are women and no one anytime you hear the word groaning and traveling come is looked upon as a mother child why because that is the possibility that lies upon the women and in the days when Deborah rose, Israel was preserved. The same thing happened that suddenly a time came in Shushan when the verdict was passed by Haman that let all the Jews be killed. We saw Esther rose. You see, it looks as though she was a weak lady. Everybody look at her and despise her. Hadassah was just a beautiful woman, my friend. It's not all about beauty. Esther was not just a beautiful woman. She was a woman of prayer. She was a woman of fasting. She understands the symphony of the spirit. So beyond your beauty, please add up prayer. Add up fasting. If not, you are no longer Hadassah. Hadassah has a beauty in the spirit beyond the beauty on the earth. We are tired of seeing women with beauty on the earth. We want to see your beauty in the spirit. Are you not tired of all the time men do... Baby, baby, give me your phone number. Baby, baby, can I sleep with you? Why, are, why is it that that's only what they see? It's because they are not seeing a beauty in the spirit. And if they cannot see a beauty in the spirit, because you lack the glory of God. And if you lack the glory of God, you will reveal your carnality. Reveal your nakedness to the world. Because everybody reveals what he has. You reveal your nakedness because that's what you have. So today when you see ladies compete for trending TikTok, what are they trying to trend for? Everybody share who has the biggest breast, who has the biggest button because they don't have the Holy Ghost. No power of the Holy Spirit. No ordinances of the Spirit. No perfect gift. No strength in the Spirit. And everybody is revealing carnality. Because one thing must sell spirituality or carnality. And it determines whichever you offer unto your generation. And in the days when those women lose their palm tree all what they look for is how to trend online and nobody come to you and say can you release the grace of god upon my life every day you move to school to school you are moving moist are asking you out this one is saying this 
that's why I say, baby, this is why I say that. When would they look at you and say, oh, young lady, I have seen the grace of God upon your life. I have seen the fire of God upon your life. Can you lay your hands upon me? Can you release an impartation upon me? Can you ship me to greater paradise in the spirit? When will a man come to you and say, I have seen you in my dream last night. I saw you pour oil upon me. Can you actually pour oil upon me physically? It was because the glory has been lost. It's because you have not awakened to responsibility and see it upon a throne that has been given unto you in the spirit. It's because you have neglected the sinful in the spirit. Where are those dreams and visions you used to have? Where are those operations of the spirit you used to have? What were the things that God spoke unto you? Where is that angel that used to appear to you at night? Where is those ordinances? Where is that call room you belong? Where is that assembly you belong to at night? What happened to those fire? What happened to those ordinations? What happened to those ordinances? Marriage is not supposed to stop that. A good job is not supposed to stop that because you are actually seated upon a palm tree. You must be able to understand that nothing should stop you from the alignment in the spirit because that is where your strength lies if you remain consistency for a while a time is going to come kings and nobles will come and bow and say you may be a small woman but the whole of the nation actually lies upon you hard as i was a young lady she was not to qualify beauty brought her to the palace but what kept that in the palace is prayer and fasting because it is not beauty that kept her in the palace in the day when there was a verdict put upon and Haman tried to kill Adasa, the bible said Mordecai, a better mentor look upon her he said young woman there is a verdict of death upon all of us i know you may be in the palace right now enjoying together with the nobles of the philistine enjoying together with the nobles of shushan but i need you to understand that you are also a jew like us you cannot neglect your origin you are in america right now you forget that you are from benue state don't worry one day america will deport you back to nigeria you will return back to where you come from it doesn't matter how you are you are a dumb man you are a tv man it doesn't matter whether you speak you are trying 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 to get now you are from here and whether you like it or not if you do nothing about us right now a day is going to come they will kill us and you also be killed we must awaken to responsibility understanding that our tribe our nation cannot be given to the heathen we must arise as the warrior we must arise as the keepers of the gate because god is hitching upon me and i the kingdom of god is handicapped without you and i in the day when jesus christ was revealed upon the face of the earth if you watch the story of jesus christ jesus christ is not a gentleman a gentleman is not jesus everybody that tells you jesus is a lie how can you call people brood of vipers how can you flog people in the temple how can you shout at people that was not a gentleman he was a violent man i assure you stop being gentle gentility you will die with it i realize that witches and wizards keep people that are very gentle but they are afraid of violent men enough of gentility i wait on to violence Esther, I don't want to offend anybody. You know, I don't want to offend the king. I just came into the palace. Let me just live a normal life. The king has never done anything. What? Vashti did not do anything. Vashti's problem was just that she said, I'm tired for the night. I cannot dance, oh king. Pardon me for tomorrow. But they said, get out. I'm telling you the truth. It's not about beauty. Vashti was a beautiful woman. There are more people that are more beautiful than Esther. If she made mistakes, she will be sent away. And they will do another campaign bring another beautiful lady again because the beautiful ones are not yet born your advantage is not beauty your advantage is in the symphony in the spirit and if you don't stand the order you will not remain in that marriage house for so long you will not remain in this earth for so long one day a verdict of death will pass upon you and in the day that verdict is passed can you beckon upon the court in heaven i know a place of advantage i know a place of strength i am not an orphan i am not an non-entity no it doesn't matter whether i cannot speak english it doesn't matter whether i'm not qualified there's a place where men are qualified in the spirit because there's a place where esther beckoned upon she said oh mordecai no problem i know there's a verdict of death pass a verdict call upon the assembly tell everybody to fast and pray i too will fast and pray if i perish i perish i love to hear that word in the days he decided to perish we saw that anyone that say if i perish i perish can never perish because the lord was just waiting the host of heaven was waiting they were hating to hear her say if i perish and suddenly heaven was mobilized she went back and assembled herself to her own camp and as she assembled now she became a jew she put her mouth she carried her jew regalia she put it and she beckoned upon the king of israel she said hello israel the lord that king is one god she began to cry and she began to cry suddenly the lord god of heaven beckoned upon her and the verdict was changed and the man that plotted to kill suddenly another law was written 
the laws of the Shushan is a strong law. The laws of the ladies and the patient is a terrible law. When you write that law, you cannot go against it. So in case you say that every Igbo people be killed, one day we now discover you also as a king. You are also an Igbo man. Oh king, we have killed all the Igbo. But we now discover that you too, you are an Igbo man, although you are a king. Oh king, can you also die? Because our law cannot be changed. If somebody has to ascend onto an order in the spirit, she align onto a symphony in the spirit. And by the time she step into the palace of the king, and a law that has been written for so long, that it we are changed. And a scepter. We never thought there was another scepter. There is always an exemption to men that pray. A scepter was passed. He said, Oh mercy, oh mercy, oh mercy. And Esther, what do you want? He said, don't worry. I am not in a rush. I delay it again. Come for a banquet. She was trying to initiate him into an order. She was initiating him. Come for a banquet today. After he eats, come again tomorrow. After he eats, he was able to indoctrinate him. When she was done indoctrinating, it didn't take long time. Hey man was cut off. If you don't understand the symphony in the spirit, they will dethrone you. Men that rule and dominate are men that understand the ordinances of the spirit. God raised you from a donkey and he put you in the high places. You were in so many of rulers and you were empowered. Now the Lord has promoted you. You are a director in your office. You are a this in your office. And you look upon us and you say, we are men, men. No, we are God's in the land. We are actually those that sit upon the gate. The Bible speak about Shadrach, speak about Daniel, speak about Meshach. He said, in the day when the king forget what happened to his father, and he gathered together, and he carried the cup of the Lord, and began to drink alcohol with it. The immortals hold, mene mene take care you don't know what happened to your father. You don't know what happened to your great grandfather. Now you will know. And the king became restless. And the wife came and said, Oh, young man, calm down. This writing is not, is not something that is new. It has been happening a long time ago. There is a man in this kingdom that understands the symphony of the spirit. And as I'm talking to you right now, there is a symphony in the spirit. They are actually doing a meeting in the spirit. As we are drinking alcohol now, there is a symphony. There is a procession in the spirit. A man named Daniel, he even gave him the name of your God, Bethesazar. But that man, his identity is not Bethesazar. He's actually one upon the spirit of the Holy Ghost dwell upon. He's like a God in Babylon. He has been ruling from your time of your father to your great grandfather. You actually dethrone him. Okay, you are not supposed to dethrone this one. This one is not your mate. Everybody bow to him. He is a God. All the Chaldeans, all the magicians, all the astrologers, they cannot compete with him. This one understands hard things. There is an ordination upon him. We don't know where he's school from. We don't know his father. We don't know his mother. We just know he came from a village. But his name is just Daniel. He has refused to bow home and say, This one got back on upon him. Hey! And they went and looked upon Daniel. When Daniel came, he looked upon the writings. He laughed. He said, I know where this thing comes from. Worry not, O king. This is the writings of my brother. And if there is a symbol in the spirit, you don't know what is going on, O king. Wait. Give me a day. I'm coming. He went back and he came back. The problem, when the symphony happened in the spirit, they passed decree. They passed verdict. And they don't understand our beg. If you are not present in the council of the God, you will not understand what's going on in the council on the earth. So by the time the decree has already been passed, he came and said, okay, you have been way, you have been numbered. And you see, you have been found wanting. And the reign of your kingdom has been divided. And now your kingdom is divided into the maidens and the preacher. And the problem is nothing I can do about this thing. And the Bible said that same night, that same night, he was laid and there was inherited again. And it was not long enough. Darius thought that he became a king because his name was Darius. He came to a point where the governors, where the presidents, where the kingdoms, where the kings begin to connive against Daniel. They say, can we make a decree so that nobody will serve that God? Darius was foolish enough. He forget that actually he did not become king because he campaigned. It was not campaigning that made him king. It was because a decree was made by whom he is a son of the gods. Because Daniel made a decree and he was changed and they put Darius. And the day when they say, oh, Darius, come and die. There is nothing he can do about it. In that day, when they came against Daniel, nothing they could do. And he beckoned upon. He has to make him a friend. You see, a man that fight to fight God. A man that go against you, go against God. Sometimes the people you don't like are actually the people that God like. And if you fight a man that God like, you are fighting God. Hey! 
Many years ago, the Lord appeared to me. He said, "Finish himself as you belong to me. You belong to me." He said, "And the man I help is always better than the man that help himself." That's when I know that only God can help men. The strength of the help of men is weak. I know maybe your uncle promised you ten million naira. Just when you are about to graduate, the devil will come to kill your uncle, and you will go to the grave and say, "Where is my ten million?" I know your uncle promised you, you put you in school. Don't put your trust upon men. Men will disappoint you again and again. Don't worry. Don't say because they are about to promote you. No, enforce it again. I tell you a story, a story of a woman in the Bible, in the book of Luke 18. The Bible said this parable was spoken to the intent that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And I realize that anytime Jesus Christ speak a parable, many of them are actually reality of what happened. And Jesus Christ said, there was a woman, there was a judge. And the reason why he doesn't like to mention their name was because they actually are around. Just like if I'm to talk about your case now, there's a way I will use parable so that I will not mention your name. So Jesus Christ was also like that. So he looked, he said, There was a woman and there was a judge. And this judge does not fear God, does not fear man. What can you do about that kind of a judge? You can do nothing. He said, But there was this woman. And the woman knew that so long as she does not insist on that judge, verdict will be granted unto the other woman. And every day she come and say, Grant me victory against my adversary. Grant me victory against my adversary. And you see, the judge say, Kai, I know I don't fear God, I don't fear man. But because of the insistence, because of the persistence of this woman, I have to be able to grant unto her victory. And what he does was simple. He look upon the woman suddenly and he said, I grant unto you victory. But I realized something while I was studying that scripture. I realized that that woman was the one that is wrong. Do you know eh, that if me and you have a case in the court and you are right, you don't need to worry yourself going to bribe a judge. Because if normal order will be gone, if normal court protocol proceeding will be gone, you will be found, you will be found right, I'll be found guilty. But because I know I'm guilty, I have to find my way to lobby. I have to bribe. I have to. I have to go and meet the judge. If normal things should be done, me I'll be wrong. This one will be right. But I know that you see, it doesn't really matter who is right, who is wrong. When it comes to the justice system, it only matter who actually have a relationship with the judge and whosoever the judge decides to show mercy to. And the woman sees and perceives. And you see, that other woman did not see the need to go and visit the judge because she felt I'm right. After all, I'm right. If the normal thing should happen, I, I will win the case. But she never knew that somebody went to till the scale of balances. And you see, to the shock of that woman, victory was granted to the other woman. And the Bible said this parable was spoken to the intent that men ought always to pray and not to faint. It then means that when you refuse to pray, you will become wrong, although you are right. Everyone that failed to pray will become wrong. It doesn't matter how right you are, you are wrong. Because the verdict will be changed. I know you are right, but the scale of balances will be changed. And it will look as though God is angry with you. It will look as though God is doing it evil. No! It was because you refused to pray. Just like I told you, John the Baptist was in the dungeon. And he refused to pray. I know he was a righteous prophet. But oh prophet, pray! Don't complain. A lady came and just danced. And they asked for your head. What are you supposed to do? Pray. He refused to pray he's not offended in jesus and that is why after after jesus christ did what he did he said go and tell john the baptist this he said blessed is he that is not offended in me because john the baptist was actually offended in jesus why was what was his offense most of the disciples of john the baptist became disciples of jesus christ the very day that john the baptist revealed jesus most of the disciples follow him and he understand according to the ordination in the spirit his baptism is stop when jesus christ come you know all he should increase that i should decrease but he refused to accept it in his heart he only accepted it in his mouth and you see in the day when he was put in the dungeon he has already read that this one is coming to break open prison jail he has come to actually open the blind eye he has come to let captivity captive those that are already in captivity and now he's actually a captive but what he did not understand was that a man that has been given a weapon already does not need to be delivered when you are given a weapon you are meant to fight when you want to guard people I don't need to guard a soldier, it's an error. You guard civilians. Soldiers can fight by themselves. So in the kingdom, you are not supposed to be guarded. You are already empowered as part of the Ben Elohim. And you are given a sword as a warrior. You are supposed to war. 
we got bloody civilians men of war war is our lot of portion the bible is speaking the book of psalm 149 he said let the high praise of the lord be upon their leaves and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon the heathen. he said this is the glory of the saint what was the last time he war? many years ago an old woman used to appear to me with her children i came from a family that is so much of courtism and witchcraft you know in my tribe in Nascar state it's terrible i'm an ego man and i know the altars where they command snakes for worship i know i know their altars and our family there are big big snakes that they give human beings so that they can vomit our money and every everybody we reign by witchcraft 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 is, is our lot and portion in fact they clap for you the more when you become the great in fact to become a king you must be the highest of the you must have killed many people to go up and while i get born again i realize that the witchcraft and the audacity and the covenant of our parents is still speaking you know this covenant speaks for four generations if you can go four generations down one to your family that see an idol please you need to pray more and that's why i'm supposed to say something very profound many people you see today that are doing everything today is not by prayer they are grandparents some of them great grandfather was an evangelist grandfather was an evangelist their father was also an evangelist and they can just naturally come in no party to fight you that you are coming that your great grandfather has an idol that you serve your father bowed down too in fact your mother too is bowing down you are the only one that just got born again by chance and now you thought it's not by prayer you will die a cheap death you see and that was why it was not long ago when i begin to pray every night an old woman will come with her children they will come when they come to me the intention was to oppress me because then i was suffering from all kinds of things i had heart born chest born i was taking on meprazole jawasid i was having appendix i was having I, there was no sickness i was taking so many drugs of many colors and to make you sure that it's a demonic case i was not being healed the more drugs i take the more i was oppressed and i was the only one that knew that it was a demonic attack doctors will carry their whatsoever they will they will test me test me and they will write so many things some of the things i cannot even say it by mouth know that this is a demonic oppression it was only me that know at night a demon used to come and put their their finger in my chest and they will turn it they will press it turn it turn it turn it so when i wake up cry i will cover blood hey. in the morning they will say it's heart problem chest problem i only know that there was a demon and that demon they were not seeing it because you see the machine was too weak to capture spiritual thing so they saw it as dot 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 those dots were demons and you see because i knew at night and I asked the Lord, I said, Father, will I remain in this bondage? He said, Philip, say, Father, if you don't rise up and pray, you will die. And I now understand that there was a sword given unto me, and I was not using it. And because I was not using it, straight bullet was hitting me. And I said, okay, since they used to come by two o'clock, I will not sleep again too. I will be waiting for them. And I realized anytime you wait for the devil, they don't come again. If you wait for any demon, they don't come. It's while men sleep that the enemy come. When men stay awake, the enemy doesn't come. I decided that we pray and fast and stay awake at that time and when i stay and fast within that night i was i was doing night fasting i will ensure that i was concentrated if i was carnal in the daytime that time i will never be carnal because all through my life that time i was a drunkard i was a smoker i was going to post i was doing all kinds of things so i was being oppressed i know demons were here but when i go and meet my pastor pastor something is attacking me at night I say are you okay it's just you say you need to eat food more because the pastor does not understand spiritual warfare because the pastor himself was a victim of what i was trying to look for counseling for i came and said pastor i don't know why i watch pornography he said there's nothing wrong with it you know sometimes but you know before i would you see you have to i said oh pastor pastor and i realized that the pastor have not journeyed into zion he doesn't know where there is strength in god so he became a victim of the circumstances i said pastor pray for me last night i saw a demon he said are you not why is your eyes not keeping quiet when was the last time our pastor come and say i saw a vision like night most of our pastor don't know where we are going to they don't even know even the heaven how can you talk about an heaven and tell people they are going when you have never gone there before you take people you must have gone there moses may not have put his feet there he has seen the promised land how can you lead people to a place you have not seen and i realize that god need to help me and i begin to cry the lord say wait at that time and so long as i wait within that time the devil cannot come i decide to stay awake i carry the jawasid i break it 
I carry the Omepra, so I throw it away. And the other drugs that look that they look like drugs that they used to give donkey because some of them were too big. Some of them look like I mean they look oh my god, they were so strange. You Note know, that some of these expensive drugs, they have very fine, fine colors, and there's a way they do them so that you don't feel as if you spend money. I mean those those drugs were so expensive. And I know that I was dying. I was the only one because I was coughing out blood in the afternoon, coughing out blood in the night. Sometimes my stomach will swell up and they will say this, I know it was a demon. And I begin to cry unto God. Because at night the woman will come. And the funny part is this. When she comes, they will not sleep with me the way they are. They will turn to some animals and sleep with me. The woman will come with her children. One will stand. The woman will laugh when she laughs. The first daughter will turn to something like a cat. The second daughter will turn to something that looks like a lizard. The other one will turn to something that looks like a goat. And they will not laugh at me. Have you ever seen a demon laugh before? The laugh is not sweet. The laugh is so oppressing. The woman, they will laugh. And the first one will jump or save upon me. No matter how much I shout, Jesus is not possible. They will sleep with me. And when they sleep with me, I feel so bad. Because you see, their intercourse was actually unifying me to their realms of death. You see, the more, you see, normally, 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 if you have not been paid to me, if they were like normal human beings. But this was a spirit I was interfacing with. And I realized that I was betting more possibility in kingdom of darkness in the realm of the spirit. And I know that if I continue like that, I will die a cheap death. And do you know, all these things was going on, I would call and meet my parents and say, please, everybody in this house, before you sleep, bring your Bibles. So before I sleep, I will put one Bible here, one Bible here, one here, one here. I will draw the cross sign. I will sleep in the midst of Bible. Those demons will come and sit upon that Bible and knock my head. And I realize that it's not about the Bible. Do I have strength in the spirit? And by the time I wake up and begin to pray, I didn't put any Bible again. I wake up at night as I begin to pray, as I was praying. The woman came again. It was not long enough. She thought I was the same person. No, she doesn't know that. You see, this thing you can change levels in the spirit. You can change level. I was in zero, but I was about I was advancing. At night I wake up. I didn't know what I began to pray at night. I realized it was sweet. I realized it was not long enough. I begin to gain strength much more. I begin to gain strength much more. And suddenly one night she came again as usual. As she came, this sister turned. And this one turned. And this one turned. Why the first sister want to fly to me? A sword appeared in my hand. I did like this. I cut off her neck. I said, Wow, this is possible. I didn't even control it. The other one got angry. You killed my sister, and she was coming. Another sword came up. Bah! The other one got angry. She was coming. Another one. And now they are like, This people are too strong the way I think they were strong. The mother got so angry. She shouted as she was charging towards me. I uttered a word. I say, I curse you and your generation. She shouted again up and she busted and she fell to the ground and disappeared. Till today, I never saw her. That was the end of Jawasi. That was the end of Omer Prasol. And as I was praying, an angel appeared and he put his hand in my stomach and removed the appendix away. That's when I know that actually what they call appendix is somewhere here. He put his hand there and removed it away. Why was the thing going big? No. You can live eh, without the thing disturbing you. Sometimes these things are spirit that manipulate them. You can live and die with your heart. You don't need your heart to die. You can live and die with your kidney. You don't need your kidney to die. Sometimes those things are actually demons that touch those kidneys, touch those hearts, touch those liver, touch those lungs, touch them. It's the them that touch it. It's not as if God has designed those things to last you the entire of your lifespan. But when spirit come to manipulate, they touch your eyes, they touch your ears, they touch your kidney, they touch your liver, and they say cancer of this. They say this. Sugar is normal. Salt is normal. Diabetes is a demon. Don't believe it to be a normal thing. It's a demon. And they, they wake up. Supposed to have seen my mom. They say my mom had cancer of the ovary. The woman that prayed for me, she says she can't. I say it's a lie. While I was smoking and drinking. My mother was the only one that believed in me. You know, mothers don't give up on their children. If you see anyone that, a mother that give up on a child, God, it's very hard. Men can easily, but women can't forget that nine months. That nine months is a testament, a memory that they can't give up. And that's why if you, can, if you insult your father, or if you insult your mother, you need to be flogged physically and spiritually. I'm a mommy boy, I love my mom so much. Because while I was smoking and drinking, my dad said, 
everybody say black sheep of the family black devil my mom said this one cannot be black i gave birth to him when everybody said i was a useless boy my mother said oh philip Cephas, when i was giving birth to you i know the ordination of god upon your life i was the only one that know you move inside of my womb i was the only one that know the kind of prophecy i prophesied upon you because i was the first son so when the first son was to be born my mom know that this one has to be the savior she said no this one is for the rise and the fall of many so some when i wake up upon the face of the earth because of the influence of friends and peer pressure i find myself going to prostitute house i find myself drinking i find myself smoking i find myself doing all kinds of things not because i wish to do it but there was a power that controlled me and my mom every day she was praying for me i will go and check her Bible. i will see my there god change philip Cephas. she will go to every prayer house and attach a seat pray for my soul I say, mom, you are wasting your time. She said, don't worry, you will change. I will see my mom need that all her prayer. God change Philip Cephas. God change my son. And everybody will bring the pot. He just raped this one now because I was a rapist. I can see remember the memory of the two-year-old, three-year-old I raped. I see remember how much I was stealing. I can go to people's shop and I will distract you and I will pack money and run away. I know I was breaking people's door. If God can use me, God can use you. You are too holy. Me, I was not holy. I will say, baby, baby, I love you, but it was a lie. Because I know I can't pay bright price. All what I was looking for is what money buy. And when I get what money cannot buy, I run away. I was just excavating the world. I was not looking for anything that can satisfy. But there was a vacuum in me that was like the woman of Samaria. That it doesn't matter with this, it cannot be satisfied. I was looking for something that will drink that will not make me test again. I was too thirsty. I tried all kinds of things. I smoke it go, I smoke petrol, I smoke solution. I just I was just smoking everything that is smokable. My friends ran mad. Sometimes I will run mad, I will come back again. I will drink and come out and vomit. My mother will come and carry me. I say you must change. I say, woman, stop wasting your time. She says you must change. Women don't give birth on their children. And every day I will see my mother pray and cry. She will pray and cry. I say, Oh God. And one day the Lord appeared to me. When the Lord appeared, I became so sick, I was about to die. And as I was about to die, I went to hell. And when I came back, the Lord appeared to me. When he appeared to me, he said, Philip Cephas, I have come to answer the prayer of a weeping and a groaning woman. I never knew my mother was weeping and groaning. I thought my mother was just a religious woman that was just a matter of Zumuta. I never knew that she was weeping and she was groaning. I discovered the success of anyone is that his mother pray for him. The Bible reckoned about the testimony of the strength of Timothy. Say there was a faith I saw in your mother and your grandmother. Paul himself cannot take glory in the life of Timothy. It was his grandmother and his mother. The Bible speak about Wesley, the Wesley family. How mother pray for them. Women, I assure you the truth. You can save that your son. You can save that your daughter. You can save that your husband. It doesn't matter how much he drinks and smokes. Don't complain. Begin to pray. If you can turn all your complaint to prayer, you will discover there is no need for you to complain. If you can pray enough, you have nothing to worry about. Because prayer is a mother of a thousand blessings. Prayer can activate many things you can never think of. The Bible says it was given to us that we ought always to pray and never to faint. Pray, you will not die. No, but I don't want to go to, I don't want to work for you. He said, no, it's not about you don't want to now. Your mother's prayer is that you change. For many years, she has been praying this prayer. And if the cloud be full of rain, it will empty itself. Today, it's falling. The, and the rain is falling upon your head. And there's no way rain can fall upon your head and you will not be wet. And that day I was wet. And because I was wet, I began to argue. The Lord spoke, I spoke, he spoke, I spoke. At the day and we strike a covenant. We strike a deal. I say, okay, my problem is that I have this addition. I have this addition. I have this addition. Can you take this in a way? If you can take this in a way, I will try to serve you. He said, you don't need to try. He said, I'm sending you as a witness. He said, you have already tested darkness. Where are you going to go to again? Are you not tired of this? He said, should you show me the end of this? I said, is it not hell? I will I be the only one that will go there? He said, you don't know hell. I said, I will not be the only one now. He held my hands. We went straight to hell. When we came back, I kneeled down. 
because while I went, I saw the dexterity of the strength of hell. I will not wish anybody to go there, even if you are my enemy. And now I realize that the day you refuse heaven, you will not reject hell because it will become your natural tendency that you navigate towards. There is nothing like neutral. Leave me, let me live my life. Don't worry, you don't have a life. Your life has been taken. You see that it's taken by God or it's taken by the devil. Neutral only exists in your life. There is no neutral anywhere. You are either positive or you are negative. Whatever that makes you feel that you are neutral is actually negative. When I came back, I struck a deal. You have to keep on helping me. You have to keep on appearing to me. You have to keep on doing this and this and that. And the Lord agreed. He stretched for his hand towards me. He his life and light. And I saw myself die. And he gave me another life. By the time I came upon the face of the earth, another strength was fashioned within me. And from that very moment, I wake up. I became a man of the cave. I find myself isolating from people. I always stay alone, not because of anything. People thought I was alone. I was not alone. I was possessed, but with spirit. Anytime I stay alone, spirit come to talk to me. When people knock at the door, the spirit will go away. So I will tell you, can you, when are you going to go? I know, when are you going to go? What I want, I was missing the communication. Because those spirits will never talk to me until people are not there. So I was always a man of mountains, a man of secret place. Not because I love it, but because the more I stay there, the more I'm hearing communication. And that communication gladdens my heart. I forget that foreign price has increased. I forget that dollar price has increased. I forget who is in government because there's a communication I'm getting in the spirit. And so long as I engage in that communication, I came back like David, a man of Atulao. And when I came back, it was from those caves that angels came and put coals of fire upon my tongues. It was from that cave that the Lord will appear to me. He will walk inside of me and enter inside of me and he will clothe me. It's from that cave that anytime I feel sexual urge, the Holy Ghost will just come and cover me and the urge will go away. It was from that cave that anytime that I'm weak, I'm sick, suddenly a spirit will come and cover me. I'm not boasting. Here are these people that know me. There has never been a time that they take me to hospital. See, from when I begin serious with God and they say they are putting trip in my body, there has never been that time. Do I feel the symptom of sickness? Yes. But they that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord, the angels of the Lord can do a surgery upon your life. What realm upon my veil is spirit. Let me tell you, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word spoken. Jesus Christ was not hit upon the cross by blood. There was a spirit that moved within his veil. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father is there. The Holy Ghost is there. And the Word is there. Let me tell you the truth. It is possible for a man to live by the witness of the heavens. As much as you see us travel so daily, some of the things we do all the time, I'm telling you, if you are not strong, you will break that one day and die. I just need a few moments to just close my eyes. A spirit come and clothe me. Sometimes when I pray, I'm looking for how to renew my strength. The Bible says, this is the refreshing upon which I will cause the weary to rest. That with stammering tongues and with unknown means, will I speak unto these people. And anytime I begin to pray, I'm trying to exchange my weakness for the strength of God. And suddenly I become more strong again. That is strength in the Lord. And in the day when they came from my mother, my mother was a woman of faith. But in the day when they strike her with cancer of the ovary, my mom began to cry. I will come and see my mom hold from here. Here, yeah, crying. She will hold it and cry. What is the problem, mommy? Ah! She said there is a growth in her stomach. That they say the growth is about 8 whatever millimeter. That if they don't cut it, she's going to die. I say, mommy, it's a lie. You cannot pray to faith now and die now. No, I was born for such a time as this. The best you have done is to give birth to me. The second thing is to get me born again to this point. You cannot die like this. He said, ah. Went to hospital. They scan it in specialist hospital. I saw the growth. I saw the scanning. I said, this is a lie. It came as a stranger. It will return back as a stranger. There is nothing in your life that is permanent. Nothing in your life. Everything came as a stranger. It will go as a stranger. I said, mommy, don't worry. They said they will go and schedule her for pressure. I said, don't worry. Use that money to sow seed. Give me just one month. Every day I will be praying for you. And I was very intentional about it. I will lay my hands. See, let me tell you. When you are anointed, every part of you become anointed. Every part of you. See, let me tell you. That fire you are feeling in your hand, eh? It's not just fire. It's a virtue. And those virtues are not things you can buy in the market. They have the ability to open blind eyes. They have the ability to raise the dead. They have the ability to cast out. That the virtue in God can do anything that God wants to do. Anytime my mom begins to cry, I will come and carry my hand of virtue. I will put upon her stomach. 
when I put upon her stomach, I will begin to speak in tongues. Cancer die. I know you came as a stranger, go back. And I will pray and I will pray. My mom will cry and cry after a while she will sleep. Anytime she wake up again, I begin to cry again. I will go again and put my hand again. I will begin to pray. Anytime again, I will go and put my hand again. It was not up to three weeks. A time came she was not crying at night again. A time came in a daytime she was not crying. A time came she said, my son, I'm not feeling anything. I said, go back and check again. Three hosp- hospitals verified that they wanted to do operation. And suddenly she went and checked and everything has disappeared. That's why tell my mom that healing is not here today. She will, she will knock your head and apologize. When Jesus Christ healed that man, when they are asking and complaining, he said, well, he's of age, ask him. He said, I don't know what you are saying, but the man that healed me said, rise up and walk. How did he do it? I don't know. You cannot explain this thing with your mind. A virtue caused them to happen. I need you to understand that there are possibilities that lies in the spirit. A day came, my dad, they don't diagnose, he has hyper, he said, he has what? Apatitis. My dad came and he just came and knelt down and said, my son, I have had the miracles and the wonders you have been doing, but at this point, the devil has come so close to the house and he has entered. I said, don't worry. You have given birth to me. It's enough. Do you believe, not in me, but in the God that can raise the dead? He said, yes. I said, don't worry. As one of the penal apathitis, you came as a stranger, you can go back now. It was not long enough. It was not up to a week. Apathitis disappeared. See, let me tell you the truth. The devil is not as strong as you think he is. The strength of the devil lies upon how much we are weak and how much we don't carry virtue. I want you to believe this night. It doesn't matter whatsoever they are put upon you. It doesn't matter whatsoever that they have it. Doctors have reported this. They have reported that we agree. But there is another report of the law. Have not commanded it. There is the command of the Lord that established the decree of the Lord. And if the Lord has not commanded it, no one can speak the thing that will be established. Rise up on your feet as you begin to pray. The time is fast spent. I can't imagine I've taken beyond the time. I want us to pray to the Lord and say, Father, what was this night? I don't know what is your challenge. I don't know what is your tribulations. I don't know what disturbed you, but I come to let you understand that there is strength in Zion. There is a God that healed the sick. There is a God that raised the dead. There is a God that cast out demons. There is a God that empowers people. And many of you may be weak in strength, but right now is the time for you to receive strength. Now is the time to grow from strength to strength. All of us that appear before God in Zion. I know they have said you are weak in your family. I know they say you are not strong in your family, but don't worry. Now is the time to cry. Now is the time. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Ask God and say, Father, I trust myself with the procession in the spirit. Align me, O God, to an order in the spirit. Make me strong again. Make me strong again. Allah na kabaya. Wale ma baba na babaya. Now is not the time to keep quiet. Now is not the time to be silent. What am I car? Get in sin. Get into 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 sin, 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 
You are not weak. You are not weak. I assure you. You are not a vagabond. You are not a useless person. You are not without strength. I assure you. You are not that. You are not. You are, you are not a weak person. There is strength in Zion. You are not useless. You cannot die like this. You cannot perish like this. I know they have looked upon you and said nothing good can come out from you. Don't worry. You are not the first that has spoken that before. They have asked nothing good can come out of Nazareth. Jesus Christ surprised them. You have been listening to Apostle Philip Sethers of Shekinah Network International, sent with a mandate to raise believers built up in prayer and tenacious faith. You can get our messages at www.philipsephers.com and you can follow us online via our Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and Twitter, all at Shekinah Network International. Remember, God loves you.